Hi, my name is Xiao Hui Zhou. I'm a principal engineer at Slipstream. Today we're going to talk about optimal scheduling. We'll first look at the energy savings potential for advanced control strategies versus effort, as we explained in the previous session. Then we're going to mainly talk about optimal scheduling concept and then how to implement optimal start. Finally, we're going to look at best practice. We have seen this PNNL study on impacts of commercial building controls on energy savings and peak load reduction. In this graph, it shows the high savings and low effort advanced control strategies and some of the medium savings and medium effort control strategies. In this session, we're going to focus in on number four, shortened HVAC schedules, number 16, wider dead bands and night setbacks, and number 27, optimal start. These three strategies are all related to a general concept of optimal scheduling. Let's take a look at wider dead bands and night setback first. That band here is referring to the temperature difference between zone heating and cooling set points in the occupied period. This is the temperature range occupants feel comfortable and no heating or cooling are needed. Apparently, if the dead band is made wider, the HVAC system would stay idle for a longer time, thus save energy. In the unoccupied period, the zone temperature in the building is allowed to drift lower at night when the heating system is turned off. However, you don't want the building to be too cold, so the heating system will still be turned on when the zone temperature is below an unoccupied heating set point. This strategy is to lower the unoccupied heating set point by several degrees so the heating system will run shorter time in the cold winter night. The PNNL simulation study shows that if the dead band is expanded from 2 degree to 6 degree and the unoccupied heating set point is lowered from 65 to 60 degree F, about 10% of total building energy can be saved. More energy savings can be expected for the cold climates. This strategy can be done manually or automatically in the building automation system. Now let's take a look at the shortened HVAC schedule. This strategy is straightforward. You'll basically schedule your building automation system to shut off HVAC system during the unoccupied period, including weekends, holidays, etc. It's the easiest thing to do and the lowest hanging fruit. And this strategy also have a significant impact on energy. Yet, a 2014 Air Force audit agency found out that 50% of Air Force buildings that could implement occupant schedule did not. Optimal start is a slightly more complicated concept, so I will use a chart to explain. This chart shows the zone temperature and heating and cooling set points in occupied and unoccupied periods during a 24-hour period. This represents a hot summer situation, so we're focusing on cooling set point. You can see the unoccupied period set point is much higher than the occupied period, indicating it's a hot summer night. The magenta color curve represents the zone temperature in the 24-hour period. In the unoccupied period, the zone temperature could be higher than the unoccupied set point, and the building's cooling system need to start to maintain the zone temperatures to not to be too high. The orange region is called setup mode, and the building's cooling system need to start to maintain the zone temperature to be under control even in the unoccupied period. This is opposite to the night setback mode during the winter. Optimal start is referring to when you restart HVAC system heating or cooling to make sure the zone temperature can be back to occupied cooling or heating set point just before the occupied period begins. There's actually another concept called optimal stop. 
the HVAC system can be stopped earlier before the occupied period ends. Because of the thermal mass, the zone temperature would not immediately go up or down significantly. However, optimal stop does not have a significant energy saving impact and is not widely known or be used. So we will not talk about it further in this short presentation. Also, when you stop the HVAC system during the occupied period, the ventilation requirements for the building may not be satisfied. Cool down or warm up mode, that's from the optimal start time to the beginning of the occupied period. And the time for the cool down or the warm up period is called recovery time. So optimal start is basically to determine how long the recovery time needs to be. Factors impacting the recovery time include weather, that's the biggest variable, and building thermal mass, and then HVAC system heating or cooling capacity, and finally, occupied period and unoccupied period zone temperature set points. Because many of these factors are dynamic, they change every day. Real optimal recovery time is very difficult to calculate. One way to do it manually is the trial and error method. This method will be based on experience and historical performance of the HVAC system. First, you need to record or train these variables like weather and HVAC system start time and the zone temperature. Then the building operator need to adjust the HVAC start time manually for continuously several days then monitor and record the zone temperature change to make sure the HVAC start time is close to optimal. Apparently, this has to be adjusted season by season or maybe month by month. And how close is to optimal depends on the building operator's experience. Another way of doing it automatically is utilize building automation systems optimal start and stop blocks or objects. Many building automation system manufacturers have optimal start blocks or objects with proprietary calculations or algorithm behind the scene. So building operator does not need to know these algorithms. These are typically black box and not all self-adapting. Control contractors or programmers may be needed to set it up for you. A typical algorithm is called temperature gradient method. Basically, the program will heat and cool the zones for a period of time and measure the zone temperature change automatically. This is called temperature gradient. Then use the temperature gradient to predict or calculate how long it needs to heat or cool the zones to occupy the temperature set points. And this may not be adaptive or optimal either but should be close and better than the manual method. Here are some sample blocks and objects related to optimal start and stop. You can see this set controls, automated logic, Johnson controls, and many others all have these kind of blocks. Now let's talk about best practice. ASHRAE Guideline 36 is the newly published high performance sequence of operations for HVAC system. This is considered the industry best of class sequences. It recommends the optimal start time should be based on zones occupied heating and cooling set points, the current zone temperature, the outdoor air temperature, and a mass capacity factor for each zone. For a multi-zone system, you may have multiple zones and the optimal start time need to be based on the zone with the longest calculated time requirement but no earlier than three hours before the start of the scheduled occupied period. And the mass factor shall be manually adjusted or self-tuned by the BAS. So, optimal start can save about five to 10% building energy based on the PNNL simulation study on advanced controls. And factors influencing the recovery time calculation includes weather, building thermal mass, HVAC system capacity, and occupied and occupied zone temperature set points. Optimal start time can be manually adjusted 
and can also be self-tuned by the building automation system. And that's the end of this short presentation. Thank you for watching.